Today is April 4th, 2016. Um, April 4th, 1968. Dr. King was assassinated on the balcony of the Lorraine Hotel. Um, so in addition to just taking a moment to commemorate um, a great leader, I really want to unpack the fact that Dr. King was not assassinated because of racism. If, oh hell, I'm in it now. I might as well just keep going. It, the reason I say that so, um, so confidently is because if you look at what Dr. King was doing when he was assassinated, he was initiating the poor people's campaign he was unifying sanitation workers, uh, black and white. He was preparing to go back to the Capitol to demand an economic bill of rights, uh, continuing in the legacy in terms of economic legacy of Franklin Roosevelt. He was bringing, Dr. King at the time of his assassination was bringing an economic class revolution. If it was all about race, I guarantee you they would have assassinated him before the Civil Rights Act or the Voting Rights Act or immediately after, 64, 65, respectively. And it wasn't until 1968, you know, the, the, the revolution on race in America had already been initiated. They did not kill that movement. They did not kill equality. It just slowed it down tremendously. And we're still fighting for equality today. There's still racism in America today. There's still problems that Dr. King fought for that are still here today, but they didn't stop it. What was stopped was the economic alliance that Dr. King was moving on when he was killed in 1968. When he was killed in 1968, his focus was on getting unity between poor white people and poor black people to demand a class revolution, to demand an economic bill of rights, to demand to say that we have the right as American citizens to have access to a good job, to have access to good, to, to, um, to decent living conditions, to have access to a good education, public education. You know, these are just a list of the things that he was fighting for when he was killed. We like to put the emphasis on um, on the race dream. And we put so little emphasis on the economic dream that Dr. King had. Um, and there's been a concerted effort over the years to completely whitewash Dr. King, not just in, in you know, not just in the sense of the race issue, but particularly in the sense of what he was killed for, for which that for which he was killed. He was killed during, this is the only, the only thing that stopped after Dr. King's death, after Malcolm's death, after RFK's death, was the move that America was making towards a more liberal society, towards a society that was more egalitarian, a society that saw the systemic problems of capitalism and the inherent vices of capitalism and didn't say let's overthrow capitalism but said let's temper the effects of capitalism and let's give everyone a fighting chance in capitalism that's what was stopped and so when we as we commemorate i guess that's the word i don't know as we this this day that dr king was killed i want people to understand that listen to his messages listen to his speeches um, around the time of his assassination. Listen to what he was doing and what he was fighting for. Listen to the messages, please, I don't even bring up, I have a dream. One, unless you bring it in full context, but then more particularly because that is not what Dr. King was fighting for when he was killed. He was killed fighting for an economic revolution. He was killed overcoming the barriers that separate poor white people and poor black people, poor middle class, uh, middle class white people, and middle class black people, working class more, more specifically. He was killed overcoming those barriers and helping people of different races realize that we have the opportunity to accomplish something together that the powers that be have always used to divide us.
so that's it. Um, when I think of Dr. King, I don't think of I have a dream. When I think of Dr. King, I think of the real reason he was assassinated. And I think of the revolution that he was expressly involved in. I think of the economic bill of rights. I think of the revolutionary king, the radical king, the protester king, and not the watered down version that society wants to push on us and wants us to remember him by for um, the co-opting of his legacy to maintain the status quo when everything about Dr. King was overthrowing the status quo. And with that, I'm going to bid you guys adieu. You guys have a wonderful night. Tomorrow night at 8, 8, 8 p.m., come and join us for Anoa Changa. Um, I'll be on. She's on at 8 o'clock. I'm on at 9 o'clock. And on Thursday, Niz, with the Scandinavian Perspective, he's on at 7 p.m. I come on at 9 o'clock. So support the Benjamin Dixon Show. Subscribe, like, share. Clips will be available first thing in the morning. Share those clips. Subscribe to the Progressive Army blog. And if you really like what we're doing, go to patreon.com forward slash the BPD show and become a patron. And while you do that, shoot over to facebook.com forward slash progressive army and like our page over there. This is the Benjamin Dixon show. I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. <laughs>